thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity to present Greeks and Swartz. Uh, probably the most boring of all the startups that you might have heard today, because relationships, strategy could be the most interesting ones. We try to save the planet Earth. Okay, we try to save the planet Earth. Uh, how do we do it? We develop green technologies to actually help see if we can arrest the below 2 degree centigrade rise on the planet Earth. If some of you are following what is happening on the environment side and sustainability side, you would have heard that Conference of Parties, which is COP21, which recently Trump has pulled out from, has actually agreed that we put all the efforts, put all the technologies behind it to help our Earth not go below, I mean, not rise into the next two degrees. So this technology will actually help to retire. We call the product as Idealium. Idealium is essentially a battery in Latin. So we try to make a self aware lumens and rats. What is lumens? The lighting that is around you is lumens. And then rats is the energy that you can do. Can we go to the next slide or the yeah, you have it? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, in the next one. So uh, the vision of the company is to see if we can actually produce a scalable platform by using data-driven decision making to see how buildings can take a self-aware autonomous decision on what is the best situation or the energy recipe that each of those buildings has to control. And how is that uh, done? That's done by integrating edge intelligence. If some of these jargons are just going, let me know, shout out, I'll uh, pitch it now. So an edge intelligent or a self-aware micro-distributed energy storage element is integrated into each of the load elements that's there in your building. And such system will understand on real time what's happening in your building, how is the real time pricing of your grid is very, and this manage will happen in a seamless way, so that the targets of the energy efficiency and greenhouse gas reduction happens, and then the facility manager as well as the utility will get the benefit. Can we go to places? So what is the problem statement that we are trying to address, or what exactly is the area that we are trying to target? If you are aware of smart grids, uh, I mean, how many of you have seen the energy bill at home? There is something called as a KWH, right, which is kilowatt hours. So in most parts of the world, you are just charged for the kilowatt hour that you are consuming. In places where smart grids are a reality, like in US or Europe or Australia, you are not only charged for the area under the curve, which is kilowatt hour, you are also charged for the amplitude of the curve, which is the peak. If you see there, the dollars actually keep moving up as the amplitude goes. A simple toy example would be, if there is a building A, which is consuming 5 kilowatts per 500 hours, and a building B, which is consuming 50 kilowatts per 50 hours. In India, probably both of these buildings will pay exactly the same amount at the end of the month, because demand is not charged separately. However, in places where you're getting there, right? Yeah. I, I'm just trying to see. Uh, but I mean, if there is a difference, then you'll pay like in the 5 kilobytes, you'll pay $500, in the 50, you'll pay like $2,000. So that's the difference. What are the technologies that will help? Of course, renewable energy, which is in the form of renewable energy, which is in the form of solar, or an integrated energy storage, which will actually take care of the fluctuations in the grid and then help filling those gaps. So that is the second problem that we are solving. If you have heard about smart grid, there is also a concept called dark curve. Because that's how the buildings energy consumption behaving in a 24 hour curve will be ready. And the challenge of this particular statement of the situation in the smart grids is how well can you address that dark curve and then make the bellies as flat as possible. Can you go to this? So the solution that we have uh, come up with is integrating a energy storage, edge aware energy storage element with lighting. And we come to why lighting? Because if you take the pie chart of the energy consumption in the building, there are three major levels. HVAC, which is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, the lighting, and then your IT loads and miscellaneous. If you take, I mean, we, our target markets is currently US and Australia. In both these places, heating is essentially done by gas. And hence, the H part is removed, which is around 25%, because of the total 45%. And then what is left is 25% of HVAC and then 20% of lighting. Because usually in the buildings of this size, you'll have 15 to 25% of lighting in the building. And what we have identified is batteries are most useful when you don't charge them and discharge them with an acceleration, like your uh, 
if some of you have used the early versions of the Reva, uh, those batteries have died within one and a half, two years because the management was not done properly. When you accelerate, it actually pulls a lot of energy. When you decelerate, that energy is not, the regenerative mechanism is not built in. So, hence the wax are given, which is the air conditioning part, and then the lighting is the most uh, suitable load to get into the system. Uh, and why lighting? Because this is solid state lighting, right? In the other terms, we call it as LED lighting. And LED lighting is the most suitable, and also if uh, we know about the smart buildings, every 81 square feet, there is a light in your building. Actually, this is overlaid now, but usually every 81 square feet, there is a light, so that also determines what is the context of occupancy, what is the domain of occupancy, and then hence determine the energy profile. We go to the next. So we essentially try to serve uh, three stakeholders of three customer sites, which is utility, the building owners, and also the energy aggregators. So energy aggregators are equivalent to your uh, cab aggregators. We have to actually bring a lot of energy and then sell to the utilities during the market play. And then you have the building owners, like WeWork or whoever is operating these buildings. They need such solutions so that they can cut down their costs. And utilities, uh, the utility market works this way. If you are producing one megawatt of energy, you will be given a target of how much greenhouse gases can you emit. And then usually most of the utilities don't get it. To compensate for that, they fund a lot of green technologies to help them reduce that. That's essentially about, I mean, a little bit background on the Kyoto Protocol is that. The developed nations are asking the developing nations to cut down their emissions so that we can compensate for what they are overproducing. So this technology will actually help with that. So that's where the utility... Oh, you read that? So last one. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I mean, there is an energy value proposition which I talked to. Can you hear this? Huh? Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, if such a solution is in this building, uh, a rough payback is between two and a half to five years. Uh, and per square feet installation is roughly a two dollar per square feet. And then there is a stacking of value, we can pick it up offline uh, when you guys are time. And then uh, the bottom was the industry for what is the industry for captured? Oh yeah, it's captured. Uh, can you go to the slide before this? So so five thousand and millennium notes, is it? Yeah, five thousand millennium notes. Two dollars per square feet. If you are looking at uh, roughly five hundred k square feet, right? You are looking like a billion dollar of investment, which will be paid back between two and a half to five years, depending on where your building is. If your building is in California Market Street, then probably it is in less than two years. If your building is somewhere in Cambridge or Boston, probably it will take three years. Yeah, I mean the bottom block is the value that you deliver to the individual building owners or the facility managers. The top two blocks are actually taking us to the next level of cloud controlled virtual pavements where you can actually create a power plant out of this building. So this is targeting that, that's what is useful for the utilities. And also how do you enable the peer-to-peer -peer energy transaction? Because I think all of us have heard about this distributed ledger systems, right? Which is blockchain. So this technology will actually help you in the peer-to-peer -peer energy markets. And this is the uh, laptop that I was speaking to you about. Can you go to the last one? Uh, yeah, I mean the markets, we have seen that 2017 we have so, I mean the market is like 190 megawatt hour of energy storage in US non-residential building segment, which is going all the way to more than 2,000, yeah, more than 2,400 megawatt hour. So that means there is a enough scope and this market has just started, I mean like five years. And lighting market is huge. I mean we see a capacity of selling more than 9 million square feet. Yeah, the last slide. And lowest hanging fruits are California, New York, and Massachusetts because that's where 90% of the money is made in the US. Next. And we are better than Tesla power packs because we integrate the energy storage solutions in the lighting and we don't need additional space. And people who actually pay for the space know how much each square feet will cost. And then it's an AI driven and embedded, and then it creates analytics not only on what is happening on the energy side. It also creates analytics of what is the context of occupancy. And for the price of one energy storage element, you would also get a smart lighting system, which is an IoT infrastructure. The next. The go to market, we essentially have a solution sales, software as a service, or a storage as a service, and then finally we want to create an OEM model as well, original equipment manufacturing. The next one. 
So that's the team. Uh, me and Yao Jun were the co-founder, founded this team, and Ang is helping us actually develop the market in the US. Uh, so, uh, he works out of San Francisco, she works out of Chicago, and I develop the product over here. That's more or less the story. I was with Philips for around 40 years. I've come out in the current year. Current is uh, I'm with Chief Technology Officer. So where is it open, sir? It's in uh, Ramaya Institute of Technology. I have an email. Oh, oh, status of the company. Yeah, we are in the product development stage. We have, right, we have made the demonstrator ready, and then we have got the first pilot from one of the biggest research institutes in uh, Oh yeah, we have uh, six, six five invention disclosures in the last six months. They will take around 18 and a half months to 19 months before they convert into papers. I mean, I have a background in research, but like was 14 years in research, so both of us, me and Yam. My background is, uh, uh, I mean, I was with Philips Research for around 13 to 14 years, and then I was working on deep learning, ML, AI, IoT technology. So there's lots of stuff going on alternative. Uh, yes. So your solution is between the. Oh, is it lacking or? Right? Oh, yeah, exactly. It fits in. It fits in. Yeah. Because it's essentially a software based solution with a little bit of hardware to enable the software to work. I mean, essentially, like iTunes, right? iTunes needs some basic phone. It doesn't matter what that phone is. Any questions? regulated like us because here we have a regulated market right? so it comes at the same price throughout the day. So you are all collaborating with other products? It's an ecosystem actually. Yes, uh, do you have any issues? Oh yeah, ecosystem well, because it's uh, uh, there is a little bit of uh, partnership building happening. Not yet close. Not yet close. I mean, uh, two yeah, of the vendors. Sorry, I haven't mentioned. No, nothing. Oh yeah, we can mention. Uh, I mean, if I have to name the names, then uh, Bosch is ready with us to actually go to the market with uh, the solar solution. Because in one of the slides, if you can go back, uh, what is so the that? Battery is going to be oh, okay, battery is uh, the biggest names that you can think of. Uh, uh, Panasonic and uh, Samsung. Yes. Peak price option. Yeah, I can explain you a little bit on that. So typically how uh, the value chain of uh, energy works is uh, you have someone producing energy and then you have someone consuming energy. So intermediately there are like four or five different players. So we call them distribution companies like Westcom, we call them Discom, right there. They are the distribution companies and then there is a transmission company like NTPC or KERC. These are the regulators and transmission companies. So usually the distribution companies pay the price at wholesale rates and then the retails. So they are like, uh, yeah, the Amazon wholesaler, right? Amazon wholesaler comes, collects from all the uh, producers and then they distribute to the retail customers. Why doing that? During the summer times, what happens? You not only have your regular consumption, but because of the heat that is produced out there in the engine of the you have an additional greenhouse gases being produced to manage the peak plants. So those speaker plants, why they come? They essentially come from coal. I think recently in the budget, if we have paid attention, Nirmala was actually talking about financing how to retire speaker plants. 
And that story has already happened out there in US, Japan, and France. Because Japan is like 90% nuclear, and France is also 92-93% nuclear. To cut down the speaker price, you need renewable energy. Why do you need renewable energy? Because the amount of greenhouse gases that get generated are pretty limited there, and they can be localized and controlled in one point. And that is where the solutions like this will help in displacing those greenhouse gases. Oh, and, uh, Plants depends on which kind of nuclear you are talking about. There are two kinds of nuclear, right? The one that which has, uh, we have seen the problem recently in Japan, that's still the old technology. We are now talking about the clean nuclear, yeah. which is, I think there are, what, three plants today in the world? Which but all the ones invested in India, what's coming up, for all of the things. Uh, that is the intention. Let's get into that sometime. That's the intention. Uh, if you talk to the scientists, there, no, I but think yeah, they are 15 years ago. They are 15 years away, and then the guy who actually went out to the streets, uh, the one who was working in Kurakulam, his whole point is actually you are selling a half truth. Yeah, it's not yet. It's not yet there. So, but I think uh, clean nuclear. We have only three plants. I think one near. Uh, I think a nice city in France. There is one place where they are experimenting, and then one in Japan, and I don't remember the third. Germany. Germany actually doesn't want the, I mean, if you are in the, away from They are moving away from everything. At last six months back, Sunday, they had more energy than they could consume as a country. We are paying for Sorry. We are paying for We are paying. No, they are charging you. If you have a solar, they call a solar panel. Okay, thank Sorry. you. So, uh, any particular ask? Yeah. Thanks a lot. So we are in a straight where we have bootstrapped this, uh, both of us, and uh, we are essentially looking at uh, seed funding. So if you, some of you are watching, we are looking at two hundred thousand dollars. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I I can have you with the Singapore based energy company. Fantastic. They only focus on that. That's that's essentially. And then on the next one, you are asking only for the pilot. That's to take care of us to go to the market. Yeah, essentially, for one building, we can make one million dollars. It's only more than one to go to the market. No, but uh, that's all right. So if you look at even a pilot cost and uh, uh, savings, uh, yeah. it's going to be a huge negative for asking 200,000. Yeah, but here, here, what was discussed, I think, in the number way. Actually, once they have successfully promoted that the many power companies like Philips and all, they will buy the dividends of them. No, no, that's because right. But to make it look like it can be successful, you need to ask. Uh, no, uh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah you, I, I know where you're coming from. Right. 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 No, that's right. the name. Right. I mean, but yeah. they are required. So, just like that, still there is a Today, when you were in Bangalore, buy a unit of power, you buy, you consume that power in the night or in the day time, you pay per the unit same rate. In California, if you buy the same power of unit, in the daytime when the ACs are on and all, you will pay more price. In the night, you buy the same power, you pay low price. So when you are to buy in the daytime that power at high price, you charge this battery. So you buy, you buy as a lesser price. You preserve the battery and pick up. Exactly. That is the whole thing. Actually, in the category when you were saying, no, she has put up a, she has set up already a committee just to let you know. Oh, is it? Yeah. She okay. has set up a committee on that, and uh, the doors are windows are open. So, how do you connect now? Yeah, I'll talk to you later. On. So yeah, I mean, and, and then on the technology side, if you have ideas on how to take care of battery at the end of life, that's most welcome. Yeah. If you don't understand, sorry. We actually have a method which is pretty expensive because the current regulation says the manufacturer is responsible to collect it back. You also have to capture the CG robots. Yeah. In the space, capture the SPG. Okay, I'll do that. Thanks a lot. That gives you the right because you are actually talking for it and not making it. So we have a LLP registered in the US, so we have a manual listed here. We have, it's a C Corp in US, uh, and it is a private limited order. It's a private limited 
So, sorry? For the 200K? We can talk the preferred stock route, which is much better for at this stage.